Well, welcome back to the bomb build, part three. In part two, we talked about building this door. And I showed you this rib that I made and then all these little tabs on the inside that kind of hold the door together. But what I completely forgot to mention was the, the reason I designed it like that. And that is because I originally designed it with an L angle, crimped to match the curve of the door. And this was supposed to be a one piece rib that would go on here and all I'd have to do is rivet it to the door and it's nice and solid and it would hold the door you know, in that shape. The problem is you can see how many flutes I have in here. I have as many as I could fit and also as deep as I could, could make them. And I still couldn't get this to curve to the same curve as a door. It's just, it's a bigger diameter. Uh, so this did not work. So the method that I used ended up being my, my backup plan. Um, but anyway, I forgot to show you the whole reason I did this was because this uh, just didn't work as I originally wanted. Well, now let's talk about the nose of the bomb, the big red nose. That is 100% fiberglass. It's 12 inches in diameter, and it is basically half of a sphere. Now, I had an idea on how I wanted to fiberglass this nose. And my, my original idea was I would take one of these 12-inch discs, and I'd take another one, and the second one, I'd cut it in half. And then I'd take that half, and I'd glue it to the, the bottom disc. And then that would create the 12-inch dome. And then I'd take the other half, and I'd cut that in half this way. And then what I would do is I would glue it on like this. So if you looked at this from the top, there would be a cross. And it would be curved in the shape of that dome. And then I would take the two-inch pink foam, like insulation foam, and put it in each quadrant, and then carve it to a dome, tape over it, and then fiberglass over that. But I came up with a, a different and much better and easier way to do it. And I was kind of brainstorming with my neighbor, Len, who built the velocity you guys have seen on the channel. And Len and I have kind of a good deal going where years ago I was a dealer for Dine on Avionics. So I got him a good price on his avionics for the velocity. And then also through my sticker business, I supplied him with all the, the placards and end numbers and stickers and all that kind of stuff. And the deal was I would do all that for him and then any time I want to make a fiberglass fairing, I've got full access to all his resin and, and fiberglass and all that kind of stuff. And it's worked out really well. Uh, so all the, the fairings that I made for the Super Duty, when I need the resin, I just go down to Len's house, we mix up the resin, and then I run back to my hangar and, and, and make a fairing. In this case, because we could take it to his hangar, I don't have to move the whole airplane, we just fiberglass this in his hangar. Uh, so I was in there brainstorming with him on how I can do this, and I started thinking, well, wouldn't it be easier just to fiberglass over a ball? Is there a, you know, is there a 12 inch ball that I could buy and then just fiberglass over that? And I Googled or went on Amazon for a 12 inch ball, and this 12 inch foam ball uh, is available. They have different sizes, but obviously I needed 12 inches. So I bought this 12 inch foam ball for like 40 bucks, and um, I mounted it to a piece of wood. Just, all I did was just put a screw up through the wood and push the ball on there. Uh, and then that was gonna be the mold to build that dome. So this is the ball at Len's house. And the very first step is just to take the resin on a brush and cover the ball. Once it's covered with the resin, then we can start adding the fiberglass. Now to add the fiberglass, I cut a whole bunch of pieces in, the, in a triangle, basically the shape of a piece of pizza. And then that's what I use to uh, wrap around the ball. Now Len filmed this on his phone as I was laying up the resin and glass. So there's three layers of fiberglass. And as you saw, the first thing, the first step is just to put some resin on the ball and then the first layer of, of glass and then uh, add a little bit more resin and then just keep adding the layers for a total of three layers. So this one here, I think is putting on the second layer here. And you can see it's just, the fiberglass looks like a little piece of pizza. And that's the best way to get it to conform to the shape of the ball. And it worked really nice. After three layers of glass, this is what it looked like. Now normally I'd put peel ply on the top of here, which 
lets it cure with a fairly smooth surface, but there's no way to get that peel ply around a ball, so it's just a very rough surface. After many hours of sanding, this is what it looks like. I brought it back to Len's house for the next step. Well, first, here's a short video clip I took after sanding it as smooth as I could. Now that next step is putting on what you guys have heard me call many times peanut butter. And it's basically resin mixed up with a different hardener that's a little bit softer and easier to sand. And if you've watched me make other fairings, you'd see that normally I put this on with a, like a hotel key card so I can put it on nice and smooth for minimal sanding. Well, there's no way to put that on a ball with a squeegee or credit card type thing. So I, we basically mixed it up. I dipped my hand in a jar of resin and just started spreading it on the ball. And with my hands, I spread it all over the ball and I tried to smooth it out the best I could because the smoother I could get it, the less sanding I would have to do. This is what it looked like when I was done. And then we left it at Len's house for a day or so under the heat lamps just to help it cure. That's all this is a, that's all they're seeing here in this picture. And then after many, many, many more hours of sanding, this is what it looked like. This is, doesn't look like it, but it's very smooth. And then I sprayed some uh, filler primer over it. And then any little pinholes or things like that, I used uh, another filler body putty type stuff to fill it to get it smooth and even. Now this little jig you're looking at here is what I, what I made to be able to cut the ball in half. And this was a little bit of a tricky measurement because you would think I just want six inches, but for one, as you're gonna see, the ball was sitting in a lid, which raised it up about a quarter of an inch. And then also I didn't want it exactly half. I wanted to leave a little bit extra just to give me some room to rivet the, uh, the, the fiberglass dome onto the body. Here you can see the ball sitting in a lid and that's just a, a good way I came up with to hold it. And I take my little jig and I just trace all the way around it on a nice flat surface. And then uh, the pen obviously draws a circle around the ball right where I want it. And uh, that's what I use, that's the line I use to cut it in half. Not rocket science, you just have to think a little bit on how you want to do things. Now this part, believe it or not, was incredibly time consuming. I had to dig out the foam from the entire ball and it filled my hanger with those little beads of foam. The good news, it made a great hat. This is what it looked like when I was done. And I think there I did add a little bit more filler here and there just to get it perfectly round. But that's the bowl or the dome. And then I put it on the bomb to see if it fit and uh, drilled some holes to mount it. Now I have it sitting on a stool under the airplane for a couple of reasons. One is just because I wanted to see what it looked like but I wanted to see how or where to mount it fore and aft, and then uh, how far down I wanted it to hang from the bottom of the fuselage. So that was the purpose of kind of sitting it on a stool under the plane. I have this picture here for some reason. This is just a picture of the bulkhead before I mounted the dome. Now I painted the dome or the nose red, and my original plan was to paint it yellow, but I started kind of envisioning what it, the whole thing would look like yellow, and it was just too much yellow. So I wanted something to, to set it apart and, and just make it look a little different. And I figured red was kind of cool because it matched the red in the eye, and it almost kind of makes it look like the, the character on the bomb has a nose. So red it was, and I'm glad I did it red because I really like it. And after it was done, it made a great house decoration. This clip here is just showing that I painted the four pieces that go in between the fins separately because I was thinking if it was already all riveted together, I don't think I'd be able to get the paint gun in between everything to get a nice even coat of paint on all of the fin pieces. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I designed and built the Angry Cargo Bomb. <laughs>